Yo my people, back with another discussion video, I don't know what I'm going to exactly title this discussion video as but let's just start off by stating this, does your skill level as a competitive Pokemon player cap at any point uh, during the time you're playing this game? Now what I mean by your skill level capping is, are you going to reach a certain level at the game where you're just not going to get any better at the game? Like, is there just a limit to how good you can get a competitive Pokemon is basically what I'm trying to ask. I want to try and see if there's some sort of discussion to be had about it, because I do think it's a pretty complex uh, thing to discuss skill level when it comes to competitive Pokemon, because there's actually more that goes into it than you believe uh, goes into it. But either way, before I start talking and rambling on for who knows how long, 10, 15 minutes, leave a like down below if you guys do enjoy this video or agree with what I'm saying. Join the kingdom. On the way to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, all that good stuff. But either way, your skill level as a Pokemon player, competitive Pokemon player, I think competitive Pokemon skill can realistically just be reduced to two very simple things. You have team building and you have battling. Now, I'll be going over battling first because, frankly, I think that's the easier one of the two. And I think most people will agree that battling is easier to um you know manage through in the game rather than team building because it really depends on what format you're building and then there's even complexities within those tiers that you're trying to play but let's start with battling first so essentially with battling i really think battling isn't really that hard realistically like you really on a single individual turn you realistically have five options five options to click like let's just say you're on showdown your example in a game like this you know i have my dondozo out, i have garchomp out you know um i have four moves on the dondozo i have body press i have avalanche i have rest and i have curse and when isaac here had these garchomp out he had swords dance outrage possibly eq and then you know a last move either fire fang or something else but you also have the fifth option of swapping out to another pokemon and obviously i'm only speaking in terms of singles doubles go watch the doubles <laughs> youtuber bro i'm here to speak about singles but yeah you have five options on each individual turn and uh you know there's only really so many things you can do like on that singular turn like you can attack you can anticipate your opponent going out into a different pokemon you can click the super effective move you can click the pivoting move you can click the status move if you have recovery or defog or you know yawn for example like i do on my gastrodon but um yeah like eventually you get to the point where what separates a good player from a really average or below average player is understanding game state realistically trying to understand what your opponent can do on a singular turn thinking maybe two three turns ahead trying to map out your game plan thinking that many turns ahead is what makes you a good player because even things like this like latios is at minus six now was at minus four when they attacked my greninja and i know it's choice specs obviously like that that's what i'm saying as well meta, meta game knowledge is also pretty important i know that specs latios and monotype in it so i was able to anticipate that going empoleon on the previous two turns because i know it's not going to get uh it's not going to die to drake and meteor while being able to get in my greninja which doesn't die uh if you exclude crits and then you're able to click protein ice beam versus the dragon team which you know the type is weak to for example so it's things like that trying to think ahead trying to see how you can gain momentum on your opponent especially when i'm using basically a stall stally ass team versus some sort of dragon bulky offense sort of thing going on here so yeah being able to differentiate what you can do on every single turn does like separate you from that but what my issue is in terms of where your battling skill caps at is that what more can i do from this position specifically in order to actually get better at the game like because i'm not gonna i'm gonna say this straight up yeah no arrogance thing in it but like i do think i've worked like I've played this game long enough to know that I'm 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 actually good at this game. Like I'm not even gonna lie, I'm not bad at this game anymore. Like look back at my Gen 7 videos from this channel freaking six, seven years ago. Like I was bad at the game. But now, you know, I think a lot of, uh, a lot about the game. I, you know, double, I play the game, you know, I make, I have to make 50, tough 50, 50 turns a lot of the time and I get them right because I'm just like, it's a 50, 50. You could say I was lucky, but like there's in my head where I'm just like, is he going to do this? Nah, he's going to do this. Like I lock in, like mentally I lock in. So I'm just like, what more is there to battling realistically? Like you just have to kind of play the game, you know? like keep playing the game understand what your opponents can do try and understand their habits even when you're prepping for tours try and run the scout anticipate what sort of 
you know team they'll bring and that's to be honest that's more on the team building side as well but um you know it's still a battling sort of thing where you'll know what sort of team they'll bring and you kind of have to play around it with the tools that you have now team building is one other side of the argument which i do think um you know i don't think there's a cap to team building uh like there is with battling in my opinion like team building is a ever is a eternal journey in my opinion i, I believe team building because you're gonna have new metas that you want to play uh you know every new generation that comes out like you're always going to have to learn a new tier understand the pokemon and their roles in those specific tiers and then go from there you know so um so yeah team building um I was going to use the monotype perspective, but monotype is fundamentally different from usage based tiering. So I would say I would rather just talk in general in terms of team building. But let's just say you have OU to PU or ZU, whatever the hell. And uh, yeah, like team building is a difficult thing. I won't lie. I still don't think I'm. I, I know I'm good at team building, but like if you were to say what's better, my battling skill or team building skill, I'm definitely going to say battling. Like team building is such a complex thing where like even if we look at the tiering policy real quick i'll pause this battle like this is the old tiering policy which was a bit more specific and more going in depth in terms of what it says here but you know it says skill like i said they divide skill into battling and team building skill and to be fair i did not need the tiering policy to tell me about that but you know team building skills the part of skill that is involved in the preparation for a battle assessing threats involves having metagame knowledge through playing and observing dealing with threats building towards a strategy and like there's a good amount of things that you have to think about in terms of team building like let's say like with this mono rock team that i had like in terms of mono type golem's not a good pokemon and fair enough i was constrained in the way i was team building for the poor man's mono type tournament but again golem is not a uh, pretty like good pokemon in mono type in general and especially on mono rock because you just have better pokemon to run but that's where the creativity was coming in because i know golem has sturdy which allows it to survive any hit from full hp you're able to set up stealth rocks and then cast that berry activates when you're below 25 percent hp and then you're able to move first in your priority bracket so you know you have creative stuff like this i'm also using a lot of mons that don't see usage like uh, iron fawns and like around dust forming monotype so like there's so much i can go on like i have so many variations of a mono rock team when realistically there's only about eight to nine or even ten fully evolved pokemon that are actually viable on the type you know so like even in a constrained meta game like monotype there's still a good amount of creativity and the, and that creativity is going to expand even more when you're not playing monotype and playing usage based tiering especially with ou a lot of people say gen 9 ou is the most uh you know creative ou they've had you know terrestrialization adds a lot of variety into the meta game and it's also a double-edged sword in terms of uh whoever you ask about they either love terror or they hate terror and they don't want to play the game unfortunately i'm one of the latter but um yeah back to the point of team building like you're always going to have to play a new meta game you're always going to have to assess new threats understand that the, what the top players are doing seeing that certain trends are happening which has to make you change your way of team building like i know from at least my limited knowledge of gen 9 ou from reading the meta game discussion thread brain rot i know but i still read it from time to time but um you know you have a lot of terrors in terms of the poke the top threats as well like king gambit can run fairy terror can run uh, flying terror and i even remember back in the early days like those two used to be the most common but you'll still get something like terra poison or even like same type terra dark king gambit as well and like you have to adapt to the meta game that you're playing and that always involves your team building skill because you can play any battle against anyone and maybe you'll be like oh damn i got caught out by this random terror on a great tusk or something like my great tusk turned into a grass type like you're gonna get caught out by that you know but at the end of the day it all starts in the team builder regardless of the battles because the team building you have to have a team before enter entering a battle so is that mental battle that you're having is that war that's going on in the builder where you're deciding which pokemon that you want to try and add on to your team and uh yeah you still have to keep up with the metagame trends that are going on as well so overall what i basically want to say is that team building i mean pokemon compared to pokemon skill whether that's team building or battling i do believe there is a limit to your battling skill because there's realistically only so many options you can do 
in in battle for example again like on each turn your pokemon has five options and you kind of just have to decide anticipate what your opponent is going to do anticipate what they'll think you'll do and try and work around that but i think the real skill and where the battle truly begins is in the team builder and trying to have your team ready to account for the metagame's top threats whether again you're playing ou uu or monotype for example just trying to understand what the top threats are seeing what people are using understanding how i can get an advantage on that and that's where the skill truly lies because there is no perfect team like remember that there is no perfect team and um it just really depends like if you get a really bad matchup again like every team is going to have their good and bad matchups but you know what makes a really good team is a consistent team a team that you can go onto the ladder with or play in tournaments with and you know that as long as your play is guaranteed uh good and you're not really misplaying or making any blunderous turns you know you're gonna have a good team on your hand and most likely you're gonna win the game but either way let me know down below what you guys think about the pokemon skill whether you do think there's no limit on your team on your battling skill and whether you think i'm right about that or you also agree that team building is the most important aspect of the game but yeah thanks for watching this video you guys hopefully you enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next one peace